What's going on guys? This is Chris with Half Chrome. Today I've got the MJX Bugs MG1. It's a bit of a mouthful. So we're going to do something a little bit different today. Um, I'm going to start with my impressions of this, then I'm going to hand it over to Jack, who's been flying a lot more of the Bugs drones more recently to provide his insight. So I'm going to come at it with a little bit different perspective, someone who hasn't flown one of these drones in a while. What have I been flying? Mostly the higher end photography drones. This is more of a beginner drone, um, probably under the $200 price point. So I haven't flown one of these in a while. I'm a little bit spoiled. So let's see kind of what the pluses and minuses of are this drone. Before I get it out and fly it, uh, let's take it out of the box, see what it comes with. First up, something pretty novel hard case. Don't get that with uh, some of the higher end drones. All right, so here's the drone itself. Folding drone looks like some other drones out there for sure. Uh, we've got a gimbal guard on there and the folding props. Let's go ahead and take off the gimbal guard, see what the camera looks like. Gonna open up these legs. So they open up kind of like an Autel drone. Simple folding, uh, very common folding arm structure. And then let me just peel the, the sticker off the front here. Okay, there you have it. You've got a two axis gimbal. There is no a yaw axis. And the camera, importantly, is on a um, reasonably soft suspension system, which should help with some jello. On the bottom here, we, have, uh, we do have a camera, downward facing optical flow camera. And it uh, looks like maybe some fake um, infrared sensors. Uh, that would normally sense the distance from the ground, but in this case, I think they're just black plastic. So the battery uh, comes out. It's got a piece of foam on it. And these batteries, um, if I'm not mistaken, they turn on with a single long hold. You can see you can actually turn the battery on outside of the drone. And um, it turns on the same way, and it takes a really long hold to turn it off, which I guess helps avoid accidental uh, turning off the drone accidentally. Okay, so now it snaps in there nicely, uh, more secure than some other things, maybe like a GoPro drone, for example. And um, there we go. Um, that's it. It has a memory card slot, does not come with a memory card, so you have to provide your own. So pretty standard folding drone, no concerns yet. So the remote, in order to get out of the case, you have to kind of yank on the, uh, the control sticks, uh, which isn't great, but you know, I think it's okay. They seem pretty solid. We've got a GPS switch here. We've got these Autel style uh, folding arms, <clears throat> which are here just to help you with the grip. This isn't where your phone goes. And let me just peel off the screen protector. Got a screen in the front. And uh, if you look at the antennas, a telltale sign with these guys, these less expensive drones, is there actually a wire going in the antennas? You can usually see. In this case, one of these antennas does actually have a wire. I believe this one is an inert uh, for, uh, you know, visual purposes only. I've got a camera button, I've got a home button, and I've got um, like a motor unlock lock button there. And the GPS off on, on there as well. This came with a second battery, which is nice. They both came fully charged actually. Let's take a look inside the case there real quick. What you got, room for, uh, you've got the room for the remote, the room for the drone, and a couple batteries in there. Tucked away in there, you got the instructions and a quick start guide actually. Um, Go ahead and follow these directions. Uh, I took a look at these already actually. Uh, pretty simple to get this thing. You do have to pair the remote with the drone. Just follow the directions carefully. Uh, you shouldn't have any issues. And as always, a couple of classic Bugs stickers. All right, last but not least, we've got some extra props here. It looks like uh, four extra props. And we've got a USB-C cable and a screwdriver. Looks like that helps you get those props off and on. The batteries each have a USB-C uh, USB connector, so no issues charging these on your own. You will have to supply your own brick and a second USB-C cable. Before I take it outside, let's take a quick look. Let's turn a couple of these things on. Uh, I've already actually paired these, and um, let's just and let's just see what these screens look like real quick. So you hear that beep from the remote indicating you did get a good pairing um, that they're connected to each other every time you turn them on. You can see information about the battery uh, life of the drone. 
as well as the battery of the remote. No issues there. Uh, something else you do have to provide is a couple of uh, AA batteries, I believe, uh, for the remote right there. Where's your phone go? Slide this out. You do have to pull pretty hard to get it all the way out. And then you flip this down. And this did hold on to my iPhone uh, 13 Pro with a relatively thin for OtterBox, but an OtterBox case uh, barely fit in there uh, with the uh, 13 Pro, just as an example. The drone itself, let's take a look at the gimbal real quick. Uh, you can see it is stabilizing. This is not a servo motor. This is a this is the real deal. This is a brushless motor uh, stabilization in two axes. Uh, got nothing in yaw. Uh, for that, it's got full-on electronic stabilization. Uh, you can see that here, the EIS indicated on the box. So that's what we get with the MG1. Let's take it out and fly. All right, guys, so just came back inside, gave it a test flight, and overall, I'd say for what this is, pretty good, pretty powerful little drone. Pretty fast, uh, pretty nimble, but definitely not as easy and smooth to control as you'll see in this footage. For me, uh, having a hard time keeping it in a straight line. When I do need to make adjustments, it's just had some lag, made it pretty difficult. You can see some really nice shots in here when I'm flying straight. Um, any amount of rapid motion, uh, fast yaw with the drone, you would see some jitter, some weird artifacts in the video, so you will get some of that. But at this price point, probably, um, one of the better experiences I've had, and I'd say Jack can probably do a better job next, kind of comparing this to the other uh, drones in this category. Let's take a quick look at the video quality. Uh, you will see a little bit of distortion in this video, uh, the horizon's a little bent, kind of that GoPro effect if you're shooting in wide mode, um, but not horrible, and overall, you know, a nice wide field of view. Uh, colors look pretty reasonable. Uh, you get some interesting solar flares. So it produces a really nice, crisp image. Now what comes across in these files here is a 4K file. So um, now granted, it's only in the 30 to 40 megabit per second range, which is not very high, especially for 4K. You might expect maybe more like 100 uh, from a higher end drone. Uh, so not a ton of data coming across. I would kind of call this uh, HD quality, but a really nice HD uh, for what it is. The camera is pretty sharp. And uh, overall, I don't think you're going to be disappointed with the quality of video, except for some of the jello, jittery effects uh, that the electronic stabilization just doesn't seem to be compensating for quite right. One thing I noticed is the battery was at three bars when I landed this thing for the last time, so no issues at all with battery life, uh, speed, power, uh, any of those things, uh, takeoff, landing, all pretty clean. I did have some minor issues just kind of pairing to my phone initially. Uh, just rebooted everything, had no issues the second time around. And overall, pretty good MJX experience here. Uh, pretty similar to what I rem remember from a year or two ago, but on a more refined and more compact folding drone. Now, for more detail and comparisons, I'm going to send it over to Jack to compare to the rest of the Bugs lineup and other drones in this class. All right, so let's talk about how this guy compares to some other Bugs drones and similarly priced quads. Right here, I have the Bugs 19. Now, now this was supposed to have an EIS or an electronically image stabilization version. It's not coming. MJX says this here, this MG1, is the replacement for the electronically stabilized version. Now, unfortunately, it's not sub 250, but the camera is a ton better than the original 19. Definitely would go with this one over the 19. Now, my favorite drone in the $200-ish category is the Bug 16, the Bug 16 Pro. That's this guy here. You can see it's noticeably larger, but the image quality is pretty comparable. Actually, it is a little better here with the 16, and that's because you do have the three axis gimbal, but the two axis plus electronic image stabilization is pretty good. I would say the MG1 is better than some of my other previous favorite bugs like the 12 and the 20, uh, but not quite as good as the 16, but it's pretty darn close. Now let's take a look at size comparison. Size matters, so let's take a look at that. The MG1 is still obviously larger than the 19. If we fold them all up and take a look at them together, it's very clear that the 16 is the largest of the three, right? So in terms of portability, this MG1 is nice, not nearly as portable as the 19, uh, but 
kind of like it. Don't understand the naming convention of these bug drones, but hey, they do what they want to do. Make a good quad and a good beginner tool. Now all three of these drones have a return to home, an orbit, and a follow me. And they work reasonably well, but just note that they're not on par with some of those more expensive smart features. Uh, specifically, the follow me is tied to the remote control. So it's following whatever has the remote control, which, you know, could work for you if that's what you're trying to do. Uh, but just kind of keep that in mind when you're uh, purchasing any one of these MJX quads. Now, before you go spending a little over $200 on any of these drones, I think you need to consider the DJI Mini SE. Now, it is $299, but you're getting a whole lot more with this drone. Uh, you're going to get a 30-minute flight time, a 4,000-meter range. It is still under 250 grams. Plus, you get a much better camera on a full 3-axis gimbal. Um, it's just going to take much better shots. Plus, you get some of those DJI Quick Shot features. Now, it does have return to home. Uh, but it does not have follow me so that is one of the bigger drawbacks with the mini se but you'd need to consider that drone if you're looking at any of these hopefully you found this review helpful if it was and you want to buy one of these drones make sure you check out the video description there's a link to each of them their affiliate links they help support this channel you can also win a free drone if you're one of our patrons link to that also in the video description good luck everyone and happy flying <laughs>